All right, so what we're going to be talking about today, uh, something that comes up quite a bit in the forums, is um, how do I uh, add CSS to my site to get it to override uh, CSS that's either in the in the theme, um, in another plugin, in uh, Event Espresso's default CSS settings. Uh, how do I get my site to look the way that I want it to? Um, here we have the front end, you know, of the, of the site default 2014 theme. Um, Event Espresso right out pretty much straight out of the box. Um, how do I how do I go about uh, changing the font size on the uh, the price uh, label there? So if you don't know anything about CSS and you need a good place to start, um, I know there's a lot of people who, out there who might hold their nose up at W3 schools, but for me, it's uh, if you're starting from scratch, it's a, it's a good place to start. You want to go to www.w3schools.com slash CSS slash default dot ASP, or you can just Google uh, CSS tutorial, and it's probably the first uh, site that comes up in the Google search results there. Um, it's got a lot of good step-by-step -step, uh, going from really from from basics how does CSS work uh, where do you put your CSS uh, how do you write a rule uh, what kind of kinds of things can you accomplish with CSS um, if you start at the beginning and go through that entire uh, site or tutorial um, you will have a really good grounding um, the next step is how do I get my CSS rule to overwrite uh, the CSS rule of the theme or uh, the defaults. And to understand that, you're going to have to understand CSS specificity uh, numbering system. It's basically a four digit number. Uh, the first digit is how many inline styles are in that CSS rule. Um, you can find, a, if you Google specificity calculator, and you'll probably come up with this as the first result, specificity.keegan.st. Uh, and it'll let you enter in a CSS rule and it will give you back the four digit number uh, that determines whether that rule is the highest priority rule and thus gets applied to the element. Uh, the first thing, the first digit in, in is how many in the number is how many inline styles. So that tells you right away that any inline styles, uh, style that is applied in the HTML, uh, so you would have, say, a span, a span element, and it would have span CSS equals and then some uh, CSS rule. That would be, would be an inline style, and that would override any other style that's applied from a CSS style sheet. Um, the way that you're going to get the rule to apply it into the calculator is you go ahead and go to the page that you're that you want to change something on. You right click on the element that you want to change and you choose inspect element. That'll pull up these developer tools, the Chrome developer tools. Now you want to go to the automatically the the element that you right clicked on is going to come up highlighted in the elements section of the developer tools and because it's selected on the right side you're going to see all the CSS rules that have been applied to that element you can copy any CSS rule that you see in the element inspector paste it into this into the specificity calculator and it will give you back the four digit uh, priority code or priority number for that CSS rule. So any inline styles are going to override any CSS style sheets. Any anything any rule that contains an ID is going to override any other CSS rule rule that does not contain an ID in that rule. So you, you can look either you can sort of scroll down the applied styles or you can go up to actually go up to the computed uh, tab on the right side and it will 
give you it will tell you which CSS rule ultimately won out and which rules that it overrode. So any anything any rule with an ID is going to override any rule that doesn't have an ID unless it's an inline style and then of course it overrides anything else. Uh, the next digit in the, in the uh, four digit numbering system is going to be the class. So any you add up how many classes are in the CSS rule that you're that you're dealing with and you put that number of classes in that digit placeholder, the second digit placeholder. So any rule that has a class is going to override any rule that only has an element in the rule. You can take you can actually copy the rule from the element inspector, paste it into the specificity calculator, and it will give you back the four digit number. So if you're trying to figure out two if you're trying to write a new rule, you want to take the rule that you're trying to override, put it in there, and then try and create a new rule with greater specificity that you can then apply to your site. So here I want to copy the I want to create I'm tr I want to create a new rule that will override this rule. So what I what I did initially was hit the uh, plus button up here to create a new style rule. That will that automatically generated span with class section title. Now if I copy span.sectionTitle and put it into the put it into the specificity calculator, it will actually give me back the same 0011 because it's got one class and one element. The other thing you can do, reason why you want to add new style in the element inspector is that you can add a, add a CSS rule to it and play with it a little to try and adjust it to the to get the exact CSS rule uh, that you want to apply. Once you've figured out the CSS rule that you want to apply you want to add it to a plugin like My Custom CSS which will allow you to use, which will give you a WordPress admin interface where you can paste in a CSS rule, save it, it'll get stored in the database and when your site gets rendered My Custom CSS will then inject that CSS rule into as a style sheet on the page. But if we were to just leave it, leave the rule like this, with a zero one zero zero one one priority number, then we don't have any guarantee that it's going to over override the, the rule that we're trying to override div div with a class of event data display, since they both have the same priority. Which which one actually wins depends on the order in which they get loaded and that can create an ambiguity and you don't want to have any any uh, result on your web page that you haven't determined ahead of time uh, should happen. So what we want to do is grab a wrapper ID, go find an el element like the the body or uh, in this case the ID event wrapper that will give your rule greater specificity and here because we've added an ID it moves the priority number up to 0111 which will override the the CSS rule that we're trying to 
trying to override which has 0, 0, 1, 1. That has a lower number, lower priority. And so our rule will win. Here when we reload the page, we can see that the uh, CSS rule that we added in the element inspector got was uh, wiped out because we reloaded the page, but we now we can now see the CSS rule coming from uh, my custom CSS um, and overriding the theme roller CSS that was that it was uh, getting before.